Hey everyone, um, who's actually new to Risk JS? Yes. I thought there were a lot of fresh faces, yes. Well, anyway, um, I'm Glenn, I get up here every now and again. Um, but you may have noticed recently that um, NPM have brought out um, private modules. You probably would have noticed this by that huge banner. What, what banner? <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, the, the bit that you are interested in. Um, yeah, it makes me want to not buy it. Yeah, true. It's pretty bad, but um, they may as well use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sad puppy dog face. Anyway, um, over at IIX, um, we actually switched over from using um, GitHub um, modules over to um, NPM, and I wanted to talk about how the problems we had, the benefits we found, and share them all with you before you guys start doing it. Um, so, has anyone played with NPM Enterprise before? No one? Um, well, anyway, it's not that. But if you are interested in that, you do get on-premise, um, like you have to run your own box. Um, but with that, you get a selective local mirror, which could be handy. Uh, you also get, and you have to pay 20 bucks per user per month for the privilege of running your own hardware. Um, the other option is GitHub dependencies. That's what we were using before. So in your package JSON, you can specify a, a well, git URL. Um, this one here is a public one, but the top one here, you can see, I had to truncate it, but um, you can put in a authentication token in there, so you can have a private one, but um, you can still install it. So you can specify a um, tag or a branch name, um, in the URL as well. We were, we were finding that really good, but um, you don't get any sender. So if you were to update the um, version that you want to use, you've got to go into all your packages that uses it and update it. Or you could use like a, a stable um, tag, and then whenever it's updating and it breaks, it breaks everyone's models. So catch 22 there. Um, and also you're sharing tokens around, which is generally a bad idea. So, yeah, the other option, as far as I know, is using FPM private modules. So with that, they've introduced scopes. So see down, probably should stand up. So see down at the bottom here, they've put in the at uh, Acme, well, I don't but Acme being the company name, and the module name being Cat Generator. Um, can you guys see that all right down there? No, not really. There's a few I'm sorry, there's, there's a there's bunch of things over there, yeah, just feel free to hop up and move. But um, yeah, just in your package JSON, you um, put in a namespace up the front. Um, and when you want to install it, you put the namespace in there as well, so acme slash cat generator. Um, fairly simple, however, you do have a little bit of problems with the, uh, oh actually, I won't get to that yet. Um, so inside of your node modules, you get a subdirectory now. So it's now under node module slash at acme slash cat generator. So if you were doing direct linking, which you shouldn't have done anyway, like um, requiring something inside of your node modules inside of that, that'll break, you'll have to update that. But you shouldn't have done that anyway. Quite a lot of people do. Yeah. We, I, did. I knew it was bad. They're going to be there, they assume they're there. Yeah. I knew it was bad, but I did it anyway. Is this a temporary <laughs> thing with NPM version 2? Because I think in NPM 3, they're flattening the node modules dependencies completely. Well, Is that going to change that? They'll be flattened as much as they can, because it could be different versions that could clash, potentially. Yeah. yeah. So, they'll be probably flattened, not reliably, though. Yeah. That's news to me. <laughs> if you do find out, like, if they've written any of that, I'll put that in the um, Gitter chat. So I agree. Get an update. Yeah, that's good. Um, right, so you may have noticed that the app symbol in there um, sort of has problems with um, Linux based systems because that's like the symbol for machine names for autocomplete. So you've got to 
break that out. It's not too bad, but Windows is fine as long as you use the wrong slashes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so access for these modules, obviously you want them private, but you can have them as public. It's just a switch on the website. Um, there's also the command line to um, turn it on and off, if you so wish. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Does that mean you have to publish it publicly first and then switch it? Off? No, it defaults to private. Okay. Will it prefix your namespace? Was that the idea with private modules? If I had to default them, like Acme? I want to go Acme dash. Yeah. Um, the URL format is like npmjs.org slash at Acme slash whatever your module name is. And how about for the require? Like for public people requiring private modules? Um, requiring is, I think they install it the same for the app. I think when you're yeah, requiring, you require it, you just the name I so do. I'm not sure how that works. I think have an example later on. But. When you require it, it's the same thing. Yeah. I do have an example later on, I think. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, you can modify that with the command line as well. Just handy when you're uh, updating like 20 odd modules like I was. Right, um, you also have user based access. So um, any of your collaborators, um, you can set them as read only or um, read and write, which is very handy if you've got like one of those structures where a SME or your team lead has write access and you've got a junior that you don't want breaking things. Um, so yeah, you just put the juniors on a read only. It's worked pretty well for us. Um, oh, and uh, get back. There is a command line access for that, but you just get an error saying it's not implemented yet. But it was pretty funny. But not so much when I had to do 20 modules manually. Um, right, a little tip as well. Um, NPM shrink wrap. Who hasn't heard of NPM shrink wrap, the command? Okay, so um, we. What that does is it goes over every bit of installed modules and locks down the version, and it generates a file called npm shrinkwrap.json. And the next time you install, um, if you have no, no modules, it'll read those specific versions. So that way, when you come back to it in a year's time and all the libraries that you're using didn't follow Semver properly and broke, uh, put in breaking changes, your code actually still works. Providing they did get unpublished. Uh, you can't unpublish. Oh yeah, now you can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so um, we're finding that really useful because in our um, uh, development QE production environments, we're just promoting the shrink wrap file now. Um, we're not doing anything with the code, it's just a shrink wrap file because everything's up on MPM, um, which is very handy. Oh, yeah, sorry, here's the format that it generates. So it, it goes into each one. So, like, for example, AR drone, it depends on Buffy and it says it's specific versions, it just digs in. All right. So, organizations. Uh, in my examples, I was using the organization of Acme. So um, it's not properly supported yet. Um, so you have to create a user called Acme and um, then just add collaborators to that. Later on, they're going to be um, adding proper support, but just for now, create a user called Acme and um, add collaborators to each project. Um, as I said, Oh yes, um, I forgot to double check that. But at least when it first came out, every collaborator had to be a paying customer as well. Where we were going to get everyone on the team to um, be a collaborator. But um, instead we ended up making a reader account and just giving that to all of the readers, um, which is a bit of a pain. Shared passwords again, I know. But, or you can get everyone to pay. Um, I'll get to the pricing later on in case anyone has questions. 
Um, oh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's seven bucks a month per user um, in US dollars as well. Um, so considering how much we actually use NPM in our day-to-day -day lives, I didn't care too much paying that, especially when work was going to expensify. Um, but yeah, seven dollars isn't too bad. Um, it's ten bucks a month, I think, for um, like private. Uh, private modules on GitHub, so and that's unlimited. It is yeah. probably to some reasonable point, but <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have a large team and uh, it does add up. Oh yes, and this was the worst part of it all: was payment gateway is very flaky. About fifty percent of the accounts that we actually tried to pay for worked. Um, and the, the support is pretty slow, probably, because everyone's complaining about them not um, getting payment. So, like, the same credit card would work on a completely different account, and uh, retrying just did nothing. So, um, yeah, just good luck. Um, hopefully it's better now. It was, like, a month ago. So, yeah. Good luck. Oh, I thought I'd throw in a bonus tip as well, since you're all, after this, going to be using NPM modules instead of a giant monolithic application. Um, NPM link is a command that seems to be little known, but very powerful. It creates, so if you're working on cat generator over here, um, your sub-module of cat farm, um, you type the command NPM link, and that makes a symbolic link in your um, node modules folder somewhere globally. Um, and then when you're in cat farm, you say npm link and give it the full um, namespace, so at acme cat generator, and it'll create a symbolic link off to that source directory. So when you're live coding over here, this parent module can actually use it. Um, straight away without having to, you know, copy files of seeing people are syncing copying things directly or working directly inside of the public modules. I don't have to do that anymore. So sorry, the link, it allows you to sort of work on the uh, the uh, dependency project. Yeah. And so you don't then have to do npm install again in the dependency. Yeah, correct. As far as your code, your workspace knows it's the same as it's there. You're working in the same directory. So, yeah. It's similar to that. Uh, pro tip though, don't leave it there. If you've been working for a while and you want to like make sure everything's legit and everything's published, just delete up their models and start again. Like reinstall everything. Because so there are many problems with that. Like you try and do certain things and it just dies. Because there are certain things, certain tools don't like to work with similar things sometimes. Well, yeah, so make sure you test your code before, yeah, before you commit. You know, you continuous delivery. Yeah, you should be doing Jenkins or something. There's hard links on the Windows. So what's the difference with um, hard links? Uh, oh, yeah, that, well, and that enough for everyone? You can delete the hard link on the Windows and you just wipe it. Oh, it okay. really is the file. So if you go and delete it, it's gone. So if you delete <laughs> node modules, <laughs> if, if you, go if you, you delete, delete the module, module yeah. and you delete it, you delete it from where it was like from as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so it's not like you're not you're not deleting the shortcut. You're yeah. actually deleting. It. So the thing that I said yeah. is, we know that don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got very conflicting information. <laughs> you're telling me you have to delete it. Are you, you on Windows? Can, you delete it. You, if you're not on Windows, okay. do delete. It. So I've had a few mess on Windows. What's my thing? I don't get it deleting. If you delete the parent, it's, it's fine. fine. I mean, there's symbolic links. MK link is symbolic as well. Figure it out offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moral, moral of the story, if you're on Windows, be careful. Don't be, be careful on Windows as well. Be safe. Alright, that's it. Um, short talk. Again, I'm Glenn. If you want to email me any questions or hit me up on Twitter. Also, um, I work at IIS and we're hiring um, very, very vigorously. So if you want to work with Node, um, Angular, Mongo, um, we're hiring tech writers, um, 
coders. Um, I don't know what happened there. That was my last slide anyway. Um, yeah, we go to that link that was there. Ah, it's gone to sleep. That's good. Yeah, I'm not going to find that link. Uh, just Google IAX and look for the jobs on the site. Yeah, cool. And we sponsored Peter. So enjoy Peter. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, is there any actual questions? I have a question. Yes. Uh, do they provide any kind of SLA? Um, not that I care to look for or found. I'm sure there is surprise. something. Because they've been was, pretty stable. Yeah, like this was a problem with GitHub. Sometimes it just goes down on the DDoS or whatever. Just yeah. You cannot download your dependencies if you just say you can work with GitHub. If the SLA is very important to you guys, um, I would recommend probably looking at Enterprise. So that way you're hosting your own. Um, and yeah. Good luck keeping that up. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Oh yeah. Has this um, caused any shift with like companies that maintain their own modules and put them on their own native base yet? Or? Not that I've seen. Um, I don't think people have just been moving their modules. But it's a potential with It's a potential problem. Yeah. It would be a pretty shitty move if they did that. Yeah. I think it's more if like you're wanting to use the name that's already taken. So that way, or if uh, someone stopped maintaining a particular project, you can then publish, you know, fork it and then keep it maintained under your own scope. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, so you just mentioned this this problem with when you uh, use the GitHub URLs and the semver. You said it wasn't working. Uh, could you just expand on that? Uh, exactly what the problem was with uh, hosting on GitHub. Um, well. You, you understand Semver? Like no, the, it doesn't. Oh, okay. So with um, Semver, it's the um, B1, you know, dot zero, dot zero. So um, one is like a major breaking change. Um, the second one is a feature that shouldn't break anything. And the third one is just a patch, so like a bug fix. So um, that that's what Node developers typically follow. Um, should. But, yeah, should follow. Um, but with the GitHub, that is, that's just a tag that you're putting in there um, if you do v1.0.0, which means you won't get any patch updates, um, you won't get any new features unless you specifically um, put that in there. If you point it like at a branch, for example, you will have to check download it every single time, which is really unfortunate because you like run an update and you're putting it like a branch, it doesn't know if it's changed, so it just downloads the whole repo again, so they put the latest version. Also, it's really quite slow. Extremely slow. compared to anything Extremely like, slow. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like full version updates as well, right? Like, let's say if you can trust that repo, then you can just say, okay, give me everything under the version one, and the NPM dependency. So you can just say, like, just the letter one, like the number one in the dependency. So it'll be like, my dev, you know, and then one. So now I'll put in, like, you know, 1.x, 1.xx. Right? So it'll keep it up to date, so that way you don't always have to keep updating your packages or JSON. It's like, like in there, we've got the tilde and we've got um, also the hat, right? Carrot. Yeah, the carrot. So like the carrot is um, everything from that version up. So it's also the patch and the minor. When the tilde is just for the patch revisions, right? So it allows you to not have to keep updating your patches or JSON in your modules all the time. Except for one point, which is on line nine and line 15. The hat carrot won't do anything there because it's below the version one, so yeah. it will never update. Are you, but can are you saying you can actually use that um, that semver syntax with the GitHub URLs? No, 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 no that, that was the problem. Like, oh, you've just oh, got okay. the. Uh, so, so like for example, this one here, that imp one, every single time he doesn't up, it's going to go and grab that every single time, even if it hasn't changed because it has no idea the new version. And even if I haven't published it, so um, mm -hmm. if I'm just stuffing around and put in a breaking change, it's gonna, you're gonna get it. Yeah. What's yeah. the syntax for just the latest? Is that just the carrot? That, that one's else? just the, oh, wait, latest. Because you can just write latest. latest. Yeah. No Five, modules six, or forget? Seven, major version? You can just do like an asterisk. Asterisk, yeah. 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 Thanks.
Um, I think you can also just write latest as well. I think that would do it. There's another issue with using um, Git dependencies, which is do you want you have to also publish or pre-compile to the Git repo, right? When if you're doing an NPM, you're always publishing what's already pre-compiled. Right, so you, you will compile your project and then publish the compiled version. So that way when you do npm install, you're getting the compiled one. When if you're doing git, then you'll have to um, publish your compiled changes to the git repo, which is a real pain in the ass for your git history. Any other questions? Cool.